When faced with a mountain, have faith. You are not alone. Be still and listen. Follow the new path, for the goal is near. It is just around the next bend. Do not quit, my friend, for if you do, the joy of the journey will come to an end. Have faith, the mountain will open, allowing a passage through. If you believe in your dreams, they will come true. Hello and welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm Sabine Schneider, Curator of Learning at the Art Gallery of Grand Prairie. And I'm here with Grand Prairie artist Carmen Hagstand inside his exhibition Domino 6. Here at the Art Gallery on display from October 8th, 2020 to February 1st, 2021. In between us is this magnificent mural called Domino the Journey. This painting could be seen as the final piece of his Domino exhibition series. And before I invite Carmen Hagstad to walk us through his exhibition and speak about his artwork, his life, the meaning of community and his Domino series, I would like to invite you to experience the artwork on your own. I would like to invite you to enjoy a brief visual journey through his mural. Notice the vibrancy in the colors. Look at the fore, middle, and background, and observe how thought and skillfully you orchestrated the painting for us. What shapes do you see? What kind of symbols do you notice? How does this composition speak to you? And then imagine that it took the artist all his life to create this monumental artwork. Well, thank you, Sabine. Yes, it did take all my life to, to paint this mural. I, I'd, uh, I actually have had exhibitions uh, over the years. And as a boy, I, I, I dreamed about becoming uh, a full-time artist, and I can happily say at 65 years old, I'm painting full-time. And uh, so I had the time to put together an exhibition of this size, and it's a real honor to show in the Art Gallery of Grand Prairie. Uh, you spend, I probably spent over a year producing these works, and uh, when you're in your studio, you kind of lose sight of uh, what they really look like. So to see them in the gallery, uh, it's very exciting for an artist, and I'm hoping it's exciting for the audience. Uh, before we do the tour, talk a little bit of, more about this mural piece. Uh, I did a, I also like to write poems and, uh, and poetry, and, and I like design work, and I designed an image uh, many years ago it's a, uh, called uh, Joy of the Journey. It's been made in stained glass, and that's one of the pieces in the show as well. The um, uh, large piece has really uh, started from my earlier piece, but it didn't have dominoes. And uh, I'm going to talk about finding the domino and how the domino becomes fairly predominant in my, my works of, of late. And uh, in this, this uh, mural, you'll see the dominoes lined up. And if you ever played with dominoes, which I did as a child, uh, I, I love playing with dominoes. And uh, not necessarily playing the game, but uh, stacking them on end to end and pushing them over so it has a, a domino effect. The uh, technique of putting uh, a mural of this size is uh, the logistics are a little bit difficult and it's very challenging because you're working so large and it's difficult to get the perspective in. Uh, but if you'll notice in, in this large piece, you'll see the, the circle, the triangle, all fitting within the square. And uh, it's a challenge, but I uh, thoroughly enjoy doing it. And uh, I think it looks fairly good to at the end of this show. And uh, 
we'll talk maybe a little bit about it again at the end of our tour. Art comes in many forms and earlier I was talking about metaphors and symbols and I'm now standing beside my life's ladder and uh, when I was a boy I actually lived on a farm. It was just uh, north of La Glace and a lot of you that live in Grand Prairie would know where La Glace is. And one of the things when I was a child uh, we uh, had to work on the farm not just uh, uh, be there to play. <laughs> and uh, but I always had fun working on the farm and one of the duties was to clean our, our bins and uh, build ladders and basically built a ladder out of two by fours. And uh, we'd climb that ladder and look into the bin and see if it was full of grain. And uh, later on when I went to university and uh, uh, I wanted to quit the university and I'd, uh, dawned on me that uh, probably wasn't a good thing to do and I had a friend uh, that said uh, well if you quit university will you be going up life's ladder or down life's ladder and I was wondering what he was talking about and uh, he said well if you were bettering yourself by going by quitting then uh, you'd be going up the ladder but if you're quitting and you're going uh, it's going to uh, not be good for your future you're going down so Years later, I, I wrote a poem, and uh, I'd like to share that poem with you right now. Life's ladder, with rungs above and below, often is very hard to know. At times, it seems not to matter. Should one risk the climb, or take the easy road down, and simply stand still, making an earthly existence empty with little reason, experiencing no thrill. There are times when the rungs become difficult, filled with resistance, making it hard to continue the climb. It is then one must hold on, not look down, but instead look within. Then up to top a life's ladder, fill the heart with desire, faith, and persistence, for the next rung on life's ladder really does matter. It may take some time of stillness to rid what feels like an illness, but with time, the next rung can be conquered if one remembers the greatest gift in life is having the opportunity to climb. Part of the story that I didn't tell you was I was also a hockey player, and that was another dream of mine, and uh, I got to fulfill that dream and was able to attend my university because of hockey. And so that was why I was going to quit because I didn't get to go on a road trip. So my ego was bruised, and I thought, I'm going to quit. But thanks to a friend who said, will you be going up life's ladder or down? I took his advice and stayed at art school and stayed on the uh, hockey team. And now I'm, I was able to fulfill both of those dreams, played college hockey, and now I'm a full-time artist. Yes, now we have uh, moved into gallery number three, which is uh, a smaller gallery that is really used for kind of the introduction of Domino 6. I brought in uh, displays and some works from my early, early years. In fact, in this display cabinet, my mother actually kept my grade eight art portfolio. So if you ever got a chance to come and see the show, you would see the sketches and and some of the inspiration I had as a child. And we have the schoolroom. I also have some quotes that uh, have inspired me. And my one quote on the wall is, uh, my love for my wife, family, friends, and art makes me complete. And I really feel that's so true, because uh, without that support, I, I couldn't do what I'm doing. And, uh, as I've mentioned probably many times, I, I just love creating art. And, but I didn't create art full time, as I mentioned earlier. I, I uh, spent 40 years in the, in the community uh, uh, at uh, various jobs, all related to fundraising for our community. And uh, I had many sketches uh, uh, during the meetings and so on. And those are all on display here. 
What I want to talk to uh, you about uh, is a couple of the paintings that are, are, are right behind me. And uh, one is uh, a painting I did in, in grade 10. And uh, it was my first oil painting. And if you like drawing and painting like I do, and hopefully a lot of you do, uh, to be able to paint in oil for the first time was just extremely exciting because up to then I was painting with color pencils and crayons and, and uh, poster paint, and, uh, which was good, but to paint in oil just was magical. And uh, one of our projects was to research uh, a famous painter and uh, we could, it could be a European painting, painter, it could be someone from, in North America, uh, US or Canada. And uh, I looked at all these books and I found a picture uh, done by uh, Lauren Harris. And Lauren Harris is a, an artist, in fact he was alive when I painted this, but he, he's since passed away. But he was a member of the Group of Seven, which are very famous Canadian artists. And, he was sort of the leader of the group. And he painted this painting that I saw, and I thought, that's the one I want to paint. And it's called the North Shore. It's a stump, and uh, I, I just, I love the, the colors, and, uh, and I thought it was a small painting, and so I painted it small. I found out years later, going to the National Gallery of Canada, where this original painting is, it's quite large. I actually have a photo of me uh, looking at it in, at the National Gallery. I've still, oh, after 40 years, I'm still painting in oil. I, I, I painted in other mediums as well, acrylic. Actually, the large, large mural is uh, done in acrylic, but it was because I needed it to dry fast and so on. But I still like my oils. The painting here is uh, another project that I did. Uh, as a school project, went from high school to university, and this was one of our first uh, painting projects, and it was to do a self-portrait. And we had to take a picture of ourselves, had to look in a mirror, and then paint the painting. And uh, if you continue painting, and if you've done landscapes and other still lifes and so on, you should challenge yourself and do a self-portrait one of the hardest things that I think I've done in painting, and uh, try to get a likeness and so on. Uh, uh, and you have to like it. There's a lot of great portrait artists, so I wouldn't say I'm a portrait artist, but uh, people have said this sort of looks like me, and, uh, but it's uh, 40 years, so this painting's 40 years old, and uh, I'm 65, so uh, we change over time. The other things you'll see in this, uh, this area is um, my love for hockey. And you probably can't see it on camera now, but I'm looking over to some, and hopefully the video will, will scan that. Uh, so I, I, I took hockey as an image, and I love the visual phenomena that happens in a hockey rink. It's kind of like the trees and, and our landscape, and I was living on the ice, and I, I looked at the ice, and I was looking at the skate marks, and, and I thought, gee, I'd like to reproduce that in, in, a, in a drawing or painting. So, so I did, uh, probably for four or five years, I did a lot of images, that, what I called the, my hockey series. And uh, for this show, I created a, a pylon out of ceramic, uh, out of pottery. So. Uh, it, you, you'll probably see it later. It's, uh, 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 if any of you are watching this and play hockey uh, in practice, you're always going around these pylons. And uh, so I created that. And, and uh, some of the other images are just the hockey sticks coming into the picture flame, frame. And it's more from the perspective of being a hockey player than, say, a fan. So you'll only see bits and pieces of of the uh, ice and uh, the skate marks and puck marks. The uh, other display is really my, my community involvement and uh, just my inspiration, uh, you know, things that I've done over the years and uh, 
many sketchbooks. I, I've got, I think, if I count them up, uh, I would probably have 50 or 60 sketchbooks and, and uh, just notes. Uh, I like to write. I like to read. And uh, so those uh, sketchbooks are, are sort of my inspiration and my memory bank because often I'll go back to something, gee, I forgot all about that. And, but because I've journaled or drew something, it, it brings me back instantly to, to that time and space that I was in. Yes, we're now standing next to one of my larger insulation pieces. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, this is called Domino 6 uh, Exhibition. I've actually had uh, six Domino shows. And uh, for this show, I wanted to create six large Domino boxes. And often you think of uh, an exhibition with just paintings on the wall. These uh, really came to me while I was creating these large paintings to have them be three-dimensional. So I wanted it to kind of create a feeling of walking in a forest and to be able to, and if a lot of you have probably been in a forest and you look at the trees and you see the light hitting them and the shadows and I always also really like looking out of the forest and so in this exhibition I want to be able to have people walk around the forest and then look through the space which we call the negative space and then you see some more trees. And so it's, it's important as an artist to, to think about what, what's the viewer going to experience. And so I wanted that feeling of being in the landscape, see the trees and on the back wall you'll see the landscape because we have such a beautiful landscape in the peace country. And, and uh, I, uh, as a child again, I, uh, I loved working on the fields and seeing the big blue sky and, uh, and going on hunting trips and going into the forest. So uh, I think I captured that in, in Domino 6. Uh, it's an experience and a feeling uh, that uh, I tried to capture. When I was a child, I had mentioned I, I loved to draw and, and paint. And uh, when I went to university and I was at art school, I said to my art instructor, uh, you know, I can draw, but I don't know if I have any imagination. And uh, I found years later, uh, you, you, you learn to become imaginative. And I, uh, um, one of the things that uh, people have asked me is, why domino? And uh, I go, well, it all started back in 2005, which is quite a few, 15 years ago now. And I was in Puerto Vallarta in Mexico, and there was a little piece of wood that, that I picked up on, on the beach. And uh, I turned it over, and it had the word domino on it. And, and I wonder, you know, it came in from the ocean. I wondered, you know, what, what is it? What, uh, you know, did it fall off a ship or, or whatever? So I took the piece of wood with me, and on the plane on the way home, I sketched an image. And uh, I have it actually in this show. And then I've done about uh, five images that I call Domino the Seeker. This is a large Domino the Seeker. It's on a piece of wood, and I I mounted it on a large piece of poplar tree. So it's a freestanding painting, can be like a sculpture. And a lot of people have said it looks like me. So the profile that you see here, if you look on my profile, uh, I have this big nose and big chin. <laughs> and uh, I didn't purposely paint it that way, but uh, I think subconsciously and through the creative process, it uh, came to look like me. And I've had lots of people say, well, it sure has the Hackstead features. So uh, not that I'm a portrait artist. I have done the self-portrait and painted a few, but uh, um, 
uh, I just found that this was uh, a very interesting piece, and uh, it's one of my one of my favorites, and, uh, and it's called Domino the Seeker. Thank you so much, Carmen, for sharing your story, your life, your journey with the domino with us. Carmen's work is an astonishing example how life and art are connected, how it can guide us through life, and how art can also be serving as a nourishing ground through times of difficulty. Being inspired by a piece of wood washed up on the beach can become a guiding question through life. It can really be anything what we are inspired by, a piece of wood, any mark on the street, really anything. All we need to do is just notice Notice also how our curiosity can be sparked and listen. And it can take us, like Carmen, on a journey of something like 15 years. Unbelievable. Look at all the rich, rich art that comes from being guided by curiosity and a question. So thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being with us, learning about Carmen's life and his art. And I hope I will see you soon again. Thank you. When faced with a mountain, have faith. You are not alone. Be still and listen. Follow the new path, for the goal is near. It is just around the next bend. Do not quit, my friend, for if you do, the joy of the journey will come to an end. Have faith, the mountain will open, allowing a passage through. If you believe in your dreams, they will come true. <laughs>